Hey guys, it's Vadim with Max Tech, and I'm extremely excited because John Prosser was able to get his hands on an actual image of the unreleased, redesigned MacBook Air. So he worked with Ian Zelbo on Twitter to create some new renders, which are absolutely mind-blowing. We've got white bezels, a white keyboard, new colors that basically match the ones from the new iMac, and a completely flat design, and to be honest, it looks great in every single way. But the point of this video is that from those renders and the details that John gave us, we can actually pull a lot of new information, including some of the specs, the chip that's going into it, the actual name, and more importantly, the release date of this new MacBook, so let's get right into it. Starting off with the design, the new keyboard is now white, which makes total sense because the bezels are now confirmed to be white by John Prosser. But going even deeper, the new IMAX keyboard is white, like it's always been, and Apple has just released a new white Magic Keyboard case for the iPad Pro. So it shouldn't be surprising that we're now getting a super clean looking white keyboard. Now I know that a lot of you guys complained about the white keyboard getting very dirty, but you need to know that the keys on even the current MacBooks already have special coatings on them to resist fingerprints, so I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal. And I also love that little detail on Ian's renders that shows that the Touch ID button will literally match the one that's on the new iMacs keyboard, which shows Apple's focus on design consistency. That same consistency is why we're now getting the white bezels, just like we got on the iMac especially since we're expecting the same exact colors as we're getting with the iMac. So in my opinion, white bezels on this MacBook are gonna look really, really nice, especially in person, and they'll make this Apple Silicon MacBook easily recognizable compared to every other MacBook out there. But the big thing that I wanna talk about is the actual thickness of this MacBook, which is gonna tell us a lot about it. If you take a look at those renders, the thickness of the MacBook is barely larger than a USB-C port, so that means that there will not be HDMI like we're expecting on the MacBook Pro. And speaking of that, let's take a look at the current MacBook Pro. The tapered design makes it a whole lot thicker. So just imagine the flat edge where the USB-C port sits to literally be the thickness of the entire new MacBook. That's absolutely insane, and I know that people are gonna lose their minds when they see this MacBook in person. And based on that, I actually have a pretty good feeling that Apple is gonna call this the MacBook because this thing is basically as thin and small as it's ever gonna get. And on top of that, Mark Gurman says that the screen size will stay the same 13 inches, but the body size will get smaller to fill in the bezels. So it's gonna be smaller than the current MacBook Air. So if they are ever gonna be reusing the simple MacBook name, it's literally right now or never because they won't be able to make another MacBook much thinner or smaller than this one. So as far as the name, I'm still not 100% sure that it's gonna be called the MacBook, so we're just gonna have to wait and see. Going further, based on the renders, John Prosser says that there's gonna be one USB-C port on each side of this MacBook, which is actually gonna be great because it makes it so much more convenient compared to currently having two ports on one side. And according to Prosser, his renders don't show the MagSafe charging connector, but it might actually come with it in the end with the final design. But now getting into some of the specs, the crazy thinness shows that Apple's probably gonna shoot for two pounds for the marketed weight, matching the weight of the 12 inch MacBook that we used to have before. And if you think about the Retina 12 inch MacBook, it came with a 40 watt hour battery compared to the current MacBook Air's 50 watt hours. So for this new MacBook, Apple could probably fit in a 40 to 45 watt hour battery with little issue, even in the thinner size, since the wedge actually used to make it very difficult to fit in the battery cells. Now, as far as the chip that's gonna be going inside this MacBook, I had a thought that Apple might just toss in the M1 chip again, but now that I think about it, people are gonna get confused between this and the already existing M1 MacBooks. So it needs to be known as the M2 MacBook. And based on the incredible thinness of this new MacBook, there's no way they're putting in a high performance M1 chip. That's gonna be exclusive to the Pro models. So we are almost 100% likely getting the M2 chip 
most likely with the same eight core layout as the M1, just more efficient and maybe a little bit more powerful. Now, as far as some of the other specs, there's a chance that Apple will introduce 5G connectivity like they did for the iPad Pro but we can't really know for sure just yet. Now getting to the bottom of this new MacBook's case, John's renders show these new strips instead of the four rubber feet that we currently have, and here's why. Those strips look almost identical to the ones from the bottom of the current iMac stands, and they give us two major advantages. First off, those strips will likely take up less physical space inside of the actual MacBook Air, and second, it'll allow the MacBook to sit lower or closer to the table instead of being lifted up on those four rubber feet. So taking all of that into account, this new MacBook is basically gonna revolutionize the industry all over again, just like Apple did with the original MacBook Air, because there will be no Windows laptop anywhere near this thin and light even when they eventually switch to ARM-based chips, which is gonna happen sooner than you think. But with all of that said, the last major question that we have is when this MacBook is gonna get released, and I think I've narrowed it down to two different dates. First off, this redesign is a huge deal, so it deserves its own dedicated time slot at an official Apple event, so keep that in mind. Both Ming-Chi Kuo and Digitimes claimed that the new MacBook redesign is coming in 2022, but Mark Gurman, on the other hand, says that it could come as soon as later this year, but he's still open to the possibility of a 2022 release date. So in my mind, if it does come earlier, it'll happen in either October or November, whenever Apple hosts their fall event. But if it happens next year, I think it's gonna happen in March at their March event, since I think that the April spring loaded event was a one-off thing that they will no longer be repeating next year. And I don't think it'll come any later than that because John Prosser has already seen an image of all of this MacBook Air's prototype parts all laid out like this image. And I find it hard to believe that Apple will wait a full year and a half until late 2022 to release this MacBook if it's already got a prototype like that. So between the fall of this year and March of next year, it all depends on when Apple is gonna be revealing the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. If they actually do reveal them at WWDC a month from now, then there's actually a chance that we could see this new M2 MacBook this fall, since that would give us a few months in between the release of the M1X chip and the M2 chip. But if that doesn't happen and those 14 and 16 inch pros come this fall, I'm leaning towards a March release date for this new M2 MacBook, since it'll allow people to focus on the M1X Pros for a few months before the M2 chip is released. But then again, who knows, we might actually be getting it this year, which would definitely be awesome. So there you guys have it. Those were my thoughts on these new renders from John Prosser. And if you totally disagree with my speculations, go ahead and comment down below. But if you enjoyed this video, click that circle button to subscribe for more like this one. Definitely check out one of those two videos right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.